Once again, welcome back to another episode where in this episode we're gonna continue with showcasing the HTTP Blueprint node which is part of the HTTP and JSON plugin. In this episode, we're gonna cover the post request. What a post request does is allows you to send custom requests to a server or, or an API with custom data attached to that request. So then that specific API can perform tasks and actions based on the data you send together with your request. If you might have watched my previous video where we covered the get request, that does not take any specific data, that just returns data from an API. This request will send data and then return data based on the provided sent data. So in this tutorial, we're gonna create a simple widget tool which allows you to send emails straight from in-engine or from in-game to desired email address. So for example, this would be useful if you have a live service game and maybe you want to add the ability for your players to contact the developer directly using email and instead of having to redirect them to an email you could have a built-in system which allows the player to directly in the game write an email and send it directly to yourself we're going to create a simple widget which takes input parameters which define the email you want to send the target for the email the sender and an API key, which is required by the API, which I'm going to be using, but more about this later down in the video. Once again, I just wanted to jump in here real quick and let you guys know that this tutorial and every tutorial before this one is based on this plugin right here, the JSON and HTTP utility plugin. So if you would like to follow along, the link to this plugin will be down in the description below. But other than that, I'll see you back in Unreal. Now back in the engine, as you guys can see, once again, we are still using the third person template as we did in all the previous tutorials. And there is no extra logic at the moment added. If I start the game now, as you can see, it's just the default mannequin running around. So this is a base default project. But prior to starting this episode, I have gone ahead and created myself a widget. So as you guys can see here, the email sending widget. So if I open that up, so within this widget, as you guys can see on the left hand side, I have all of the input fields which are required to create an email. And if we just zoom in a little bit here, you can see from email, which will represent the email that the email is being sent from, then to email. So that is the target email we're sending the email to, the subject for the email, then the main email body, and then the API key. So this API we are using is called resend, which a link to this API will be down in the description below. And how the API works is every time you want to send an email, your account must create a unique API key. And in this case, this is where the API key will go. And then finally, we have a button, which when we press this button, it will then actually fire the main HTTP logic where it's going to actually send the email. And then for some visual feedback, I have created a simple text box over here, which you can see it's invisible, which is an animation, which will just, if I go into animations and then highlight the actual animation and show you guys, it will just display email sent like this. So we know that it has successfully been sent if the HTTP request comes back as successful. So before we actually start building the main system, I just wanted to show you some of the logic which is predefined, which I did before the video. And all it is, is I took every single input field, which you could see previously in the designer, and I have converted the text data into string and then took and saved that string into its own variable. So now with the data being set into its own widgets, this allows me to be anywhere within the graph of the widget and I can pull the required data out at any point in the logic. So when we get to the part where we're actually sending the HTTP request, we can know for sure that these variables will hold the correct data as inputted in the designer. Okay, so first things first is we need to actually create the widget because at the moment, if we start the game, the widget does not create. So back in the actual character blueprint, open up your third person character and then extending from begin play, 
we're gonna create the widget. So from here, we're gonna do create widget. And then within the class selection, we're gonna select the widget I have created, which is called widget, email sending widget right there. After the widget is created, I'm going to promote it to a variable just to have a reference to that widget if I ever need it. Widget reference. I'm gonna rename the reference just to keep it nice and tidy. And then I'm going to add it to viewport. So dragging off from widget reference, I can do add to viewport, which then will actually add that widget to the viewport. So now if I minimize it and try playing the game, as you guys can see, the widget is right there. But you might realize the problem. I don't see my mouse. I can try pressing everything and walking, but nothing's happening. The mouse is gone. And this is because we haven't actually told Unreal to keep our mouse visible and to only interact with the widget. So what is actually happening is the widget is just covering the, our screen, but in the background, our character is still running. We are still directly interacting with the game. So we need to fix that. So going back in the blueprint for the character, we then can do get player controller, and then we can do show mouse cursor. And then after this is created, we can just connect it here move it down a little bit and tick this as true. So this will make sure that our mouse cursor, which you can see right here, will be visible over the widget. The cursor will not disappear when, when the widget gets created. And then finally, the last thing we need to do is actually set the input mode for the player. So we can do drag off from here and do set input mode. And the input mode will be UI only. So what this will do is it will make sure that any inputs the player inputs into the game will only be locked to the widget itself. The game will not consume that input and try to move the character. So only the UI will consume the inputs. So you will be able to move the mouse about, press and interact with widgets without affecting the actual game and the game character. Okay, so now with this logic set, if we go back into the game and start the game now, as you guys can see, the widget has been created. I can interact with the widget. The mouse does not disappear. And I can fill out any data I want within the widget and it still works. And this is what we need. So everything working fine. Now we can close this down. And now we can actually go into the widget itself. So now in the widget itself, we're actually going to run all of the main system logic off this button right here, which is send email. So I'm gonna press on this button, scroll all the way down until I see on pressed, and then add this override event. And now this event is gonna appear. And then all of the main system logic will be running off this button right here. So the first thing I would want to do is add the HTTP node like this HTTP request which just allows me to see all of the parameters which I can work with so right away I can see I need the URL so I've got to save it right here in this document so the URL is right here this is the API and then the request type is going to be a, a post so a post means you are sending data to the API the timer is going to be 60 seconds if you haven't watched the previous video, I recommend watching it about the GET request where I go over most of these input nodes. But just to briefly cover it quickly, the timeout node is basically how long in seconds before a request is dropped. Following that, we'd have the request body, which is going to be the main subject of this tutorial. So I'm going to make some space like this and dragging off request body. I'm going to type in make. And here I'm gonna set up a few headers. So the f what I'm gonna do is drag off headers and type in make. This will make me a map. And then the first header is going to be of content type. What content type means is it's enforcing the API or it's telling the API that any data which is being sent or received needs to be in the JSON format. No other format is accepted but JSON within this request. And then the second header is of type authorization, which is a custom header only present within this API. And what this allows the API to do is make sure that you have a valid key on their website, which 
will give you access to using their services. And that's just a security measure so people don't flood the API with useless requests and whatnot. So I have my API key right here, but I'm probably going to blur it out after the fact, just because I'm not sure if I'm ever going to be using this API again or not. So within here, which is blurred out, just this is here is my API key right here. And now that the headers are done, we can move on to the actual body of the request, which is going to hold all of the details about the email we want to send. So as I mentioned before, we've made this request only to accept JSON data right here. And I know from checking the documentation of this API we're using that it allows me to send JSON style data into the API request and it will still be able to read the data and send the email according to what I set up in that JSON file. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to create a new JSON file right here. Create JSON file. We're going to add that to as a variable. I'm going to do email to send like that. Let it right there. And now I'm actually going to create a new function called send email. And then I'm just going to back out into the graph and just put the function right here. And I go back into the function. I'm going to create a new output pin called finished email. And it's going to be of type JSON object right here. And what this email will do is actually populate the JSON variable with all of the required data and then it will output the final JSON file so that HTTP request can take it and send it to the API. So I'm going to make some space right here. I'm going to, I'm going to disconnect this line right here. And then I'm going to pull out the email to send variable like this. And now we can actually start populating the data. Uh, from doing some documentation research about this API, I know that everything I want to send is of type string. So I can easily just pull from this JSON and do set string field, just like this. And then I know that this API request takes specific field names. The field name must be correct or the API will not recognize this field as the correct data for that field. So on my second monitor, I actually have a list of all the field names, which I need. So the first field name is going to be from like this. And then in the new string right here, we can actually just populate it with the data we have saved previously, which is here. So from email. So now when a user types in their email within the widget, it will right away get populated here. So moving on, I can take the JSON again, set another string field, set string field like that, connect them. So the next field, is going to be two like this and just once again we're going to do the same process as we did here you're going to take the two email and connect it to new string and i'm going to repeat this process for every single field entry i want to send in this email Okay, so as you guys now can see, I have set up the main function, which will populate the JSON file. So we have from, to, subject and text. And text is the actual body of the email. And then we are passing in the variable data we have saved from within these input fields. And then finally, what we have to do is just connect this new JSON object to the output pin like this and we can just compile save and go back and then here I actually did one thing wrong which was instead of actually populating this value right here with the key I was meant to connect this variable right here so let's connect it like that 
So then it makes it much more dynamic and that was a hard coded piece of code, which is not good for programming. You shouldn't really hard code stuff like that. This will allow me to maybe in the future have a different API key I can replace and it will still work. It won't only work with that specific API key. Okay, so now we have to take the finished email right here and I'm actually just going to promote that to a variable too. Finished email, like that. And then just move this over like this. And then move this over a little bit. And where it says finished email, I'm going to drag this out. And then I'm going to connect finished email with JSON body like that. And now all I want to do is just give myself a visual response if it all succeeded. So within these animations, I have as I showed you guys before, I have created a uh, send animation. I'm going to take it and just play animation. And only when it's successful, I'm going to play this animation. I'll just move it over a little bit. And there you go. So this is the actual logic for this system. So now all is left to do is actually test if this system is working. So if I was to minimize this and go into game, so now if I was just start the game, as you guys now can see, the widget comes up, everything is working. Now I need to actually fill out this widget with the correct data. So on my second one, I actually have a notepad with the data already writ out. Um, so the from email is going to be this right here. For reasons, I'm going to blur this email out because I'm not sure if I can show this email. I was given this email after I have created a, an account on the resend API website and then I was given this access to this email. So for that reason I'm going to keep it blurred out. But if you want to follow along just create an account which is free on resend and then you will be given this email. And then the to email is going to be my own personal email. So for that reason, it's also going to be blurred out. Then the subject is going to be this. I actually have gone ahead and generated um, a dummy email before this tutorial using chat GPT. So this is what it is. And then the body is going to be right here. That's the body. And last but not least, the actual API key, which is right there. And then if everything is correct, and if I didn't make any mistakes, if I press send email, I should receive an email on my phone. Or actually what I'm gonna do is put it up on my computer one second. Now, as you guys can see right here, the, new, the email has came through on my email right here. And if I go into it, the message, which I have defined in the widget is right here with a link with a click clickable link to my YouTube channel, as you guys can see, and it's all working fine. Thank you everyone for watching. This is going to be the end of the tutorial and I hope you guys enjoyed this little system I have built. Maybe now you can send and spam your friends with some emails if you would like. This is actually going to be the last tutorial in this series showcasing the HTTP and JSON utility plugin until later on in the future when I release some more updates. But if you guys encounter any bugs or require any more assistance, which I have not covered in any of these tutorials, please join the Discord and I'll be more than happy to help you guys out with your problems and try to find solutions together. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Yeah.